Denial is a defense mechanism, and it helps us cope with things when really bad or shocking news comes our way. It's helpful to some extent. I mean, that's why it's created. It's a defense mechanism. But in relationships, being in denial can also hurt. And it's important that we're aware enough of when it's helpful and when it's hurtful and then how to move past it. So let's say that you suddenly heard that you had a life-threatening illness. You went to the doctor and you heard them say to you and you saw the x-rays, you may be in denial. You may go, oh my God, like this can't be happening. And maybe one or two days, your defense mechanism would kick in. You wouldn't tell people what you had. You wouldn't tell them the truth. You may not say anything. This is your brain's way of kind of processing it and feeling it and deciding who you'll be going forward with this illness. It also gives you a space to kind of think about things. And anyone who comes along and says within the first 48, 72 hours, you got to get out of this, you got to move on, is entirely giving you bad advice because you don't have to get out of it fast at that point. You may have to say, stay in it. Let's say you see your child get hit by a car. You're going to be in shock and denial. You're not going to be able to do the things you should do right away. You're not going to react the same. And no one should make judgments about you or anything else in that time. You're traumatized and your body and brain are trying to work together to get over something so painful that so to help you move through it and be healthy with grieving and learning to let it go eventually. But in relationships, when you stay in denial for a long time or you constantly deny abuse, whether it's emotional or physical or whatever it is, is not good. It's not helpful. It puts you at a real disadvantage. And not only that, it can cost you your life or the lives of those you love that are closest to you. When it's hurtful, it's important that you're aware of it and that other people can help work with you to get you out of it. So what? how is that possible? Like, how do you move through it? Well, the first thing is you have to learn to examine the honest truth with the fear and feel it. People are so afraid of what they will feel when they acknowledge the truth that they're scared to do it. So hopefully with a loved one or if you're talking to a counselor, that would be the very first step that they're going to try and help with. Secondly, Think about the potential negative consequences of not taking action. Let's just say your partner's gaslighting you. They're trying to make you feel crazy. They're dissing you at home. They're insulting you. And you allow them to keep doing that. Not only are you enabling an abusive, perhaps narcissistic person, but you're putting yourself at risk because many times these situations turn violent. So you once again would need to take an action. Staying in denial in this would not be healthy or, you know, it wouldn't benefit your life. These people, you know, basically we know a lot of people die each year from abuse and much of that abuse could have been stopped earlier if we could have moved past denial in those situations. Next, allow yourself to talk openly about your fears what you're worried about, what you feel you can't face. When you're able to talk about it like that, whether it's to a good friend, a mental health counselor, maybe a parent or a loved sibling, whoever it is, you are taking big steps because slowly that is going to help you work through the denial, trying to identify irrational beliefs about your situation. Maybe if you have cancer and you tell yourself, well, I'm going to die. You hear this word, I'm going to die. It just means I'm going to die. Many kinds of cancers you don't die from. They're actually treatable and you live and you get cured and you go on. 
allowing an irrational belief to keep you stuck in denial can mean can mean harm to your life like it, you're taking your life at risk maybe if you get earlier treatment if you're able to talk about your fears and have someone accompany you go with you through them with reassurance and being there with you a loyal good friend or family member you can get through it and you don't have to postpone the treatments which could really benefit your life and the cure at the end journal about your experience when i have my clients journal about what they're worried about what they're scared what they feel like they can't face or let go of it really helps them come out of the denial and then once they're out of the denial and this is something very important we actually can make a plan and then you really are on the way to moving through it and past it so you don't have to stay in that state of intense fear and opened up to a trusted friend or loved one when you open up to a trusted friend or loved one basically you're telling that person that they are important to you that person will connect even deeper with you which is essential when you are forming a friendship or any kind of a relationship when someone knows you have such trust in them that you're revealing your most vulnerable intimate fears and worries they automatically step up to the plate and feel closer to you and if they don't they should never be in your life that is not about you opening up that's about them and their incapability of being a person of character character a good trusted friend or loved one and lastly you can participate in a social some kind of a social support group i run many support groups and i can tell you the the biggest helpers of all getting through denial moving forward after catastrophic incidents is other people who have been through it who are going through it there is a true power with connecting and bonding with others and when you're able to talk about the crisis or whatever it is that happened to you how it felt and what it did to your perception of who you are you're on the way and letting go of denial at that time will be a better way to cope with the situation as far as growing and grieving and moving forward while still you were faithful you honored your sense of denial in the beginning that it allowed you the space to process stuff to get a clear head before you began moving forward after whatever it was lots of bad things happen to so many good people it's important that when it's your turn or when something catastrophic happens to you you're able to use the denial when it's appropriate the first 48 to 72 hours and then after that moving through it so that you can grow and use that as a past story that makes you stronger and more compassionate to yourself and others going through things like this in the future